So we're just going to go through two quick examples using sine, cos, and tan in this video. So it's a follow-on from our last video where we went through them. So uh, we, we can see here that tan b is equal to the square root of 5 over 2. And they're asking us to find sine b and cos b. Okay, so this one's a little bit harder. Um, it's not immediately obvious what we have to do. But what we remember, if we remember that tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, so that means we have some right angle triangle somewhere where this is our angle B and the opposite side, remember so this is the opposite over adjacent, so the opposite side is the square root of five and the adjacent side is two. And we're gonna be able to find this, we'll call it X, by using Pythagoras, okay? So let me just write that. Pythagoras. Okay, so a little bit more thinking. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do that. So we're going to say x squared is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared. That's a bit dark. I'll go green. So that means x squared, so the square root of 5 squared is always going to be equal to 5. And 4, or sorry, 2 squared is going to be equal to 4. So that means x squared is equal to 9 and x is equal to 3. Okay, so that means we can find sine b and cos b quite handily now. And I'll do those just down in red. So sine b is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be square root of 5 over 3. And then cos of b is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just going to be 2 over 3. Okay, so the 2 over x, and over x is equal to 3. And there we have it. So a little bit more difficult, but hopefully still not uh, not too complicated. So I'll just give you guys a quick example that you guys can try and answer if you want, and then answer it in the comments, and I'll let you know. So that's going to be if it's going to be similar to this one here, a little bit different. So if sine b is equal to five over thirteen, then what is cos of b and tan of b? Okay. Um, so I'll leave you guys to do that if you want to answer in the comments and we'll let you know if you're right or not then we're going to do one more question part 3 and this is going to be I'll just so here I just quickly wrote out the second example here so here we have uh, two triangles kind of attached and they're also making one big triangle uh, and it asks us to find x and asks us to find a okay so we're going to have to use sine, cos and tan maybe Pythagoras to solve this so looking at this one here, we aren't going to be able to solve it straight away because we have A that we don't know and we have X that we don't know and only 20 that we do know. So we need two things if we want to find the other thing. Uh, so we'll be able to go for this straight away. We're going to look at from this side first. So 45, 8 and X. And just one quick thing, so I know my drawing isn't very good, but sometimes it does happen um, in exams as well that the drawing doesn't look. So that, that angle there, uh, I have it written as 45, but really if you measured it, it wouldn't be 45 at all. But you just have to do exactly what the question tells you. If it says 45, you just take it to be 45, even if it doesn't look like 45. Okay, so you always have to uh, follow what the question says. So anyway, we're going to have to try and use this to find uh, x. Okay, so we have our angle here. We have the opposite side and we have the adjacent side. So we're going to use tan. So tan is opposite over adjacent. So I'll just write that out. I'll go green. So we're going to say tan is equal to up over adjacent. So that means tan of 45 is going to be equal to x, which is the opposite side, over 8. So that means if we multiply both sides by 8, we're going to have x is equal to 8 tan 45. If you put tan 45 into your calculator, it's equal to 1. So that means our final answer is just x is equal to 8. Okay. So that's that bit done, and now we can do this here. So I'm just going to scribble that out and say 8 instead. Okay, so now we have our little triangle. So this is uh, a trick a lot of people will generally do, a little purple. I always like triangles drawn from that side, but that's not exactly the trick. But just to rewrite the entire thing, so again, right angles doesn't look like one, but if it does say there's a right angle, um, then it is right angle, then it won't be that badly drawn in the actual exam. But anyway, so 20, sorry, is the hypotenuse. 
and eight is our opposite angle. So if you don't like doing that, yeah, you don't have to, but I just don't like the way this part of the triangle is kind of attached on. We're, we're only looking at this triangle now. So you can just break triangles apart to simplify the question. So now we're just looking at a basic enough one. There aren't other confusing bits getting in the way. Okay, so we have opposite and we have hypotenuse. So we're gonna have to use sine, cos, and tan. So we're gonna say sine because we're opposite over hypotenuse. So sine is equal to up over hype. And so that means I'll go yellow. Sine of A is equal to eight over 20. We're gonna find what A is. So we're gonna use inverse sine, which is again on the calculator. Inverse sine over multiplied by eight over 20. That means our angle A is going to be about 24 degrees. So it's gonna be a few decimal places. I just rounded it up a good few. Um, yeah, so there it is. There is two examples done and one left for yourself to do. So that should be um, pretty much everything on sine, cos, and tan. In the next video, so we're gonna see a lot, lot more sine, cos, and tan, but it's always just the same thing over and over again. Um, if you just break up really complicated problems into simple triangles with sine, cos, and tan. So next video, we're gonna look at the sine rule. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you next time.